Hey guys, what's up? Right here with another video. The Hawks beat the Heat in Atlanta on a Trey Young game winner. I was there. The crowd was going crazy. Um, I'm going to give my thoughts about the game completely. Um, I still feel like the refs are on their side more than ours. Um, and it felt that way in the third quarter. It felt like we couldn't get a call there. A couple times when P.J. Tucker would hug Trey on the inbounds, they wouldn't call anything. Um, and it felt like we couldn't get anything. Late in the game, they finally started calling it more fair. And we were able to get to the line, get some shots up. Um, early in the game, the crowd was into it. Um, I like the energy we struggled. But then late in the second quarter, <clears throat> we went on a run. And the crowd was very excited, very into it. And I think we, we were up 10 or something. And we had a wide open three that we missed. And I feel like if we hit that, the whole place would have blown, the roof would have blown off. Um, no pun intended. But we didn't make that shot. They went down, hit a three. I think we got it to like, we were up eight at halftime or something like that. And <clears throat> I felt good about it. I was like, okay, we're in this game. We're playing better. We're doing what we have to do. Then in the third quarter, it all like unraveled. Um, Spolstra, is, he ran laps around Nate McMillan tonight as a coach. Um, he would make adjustments. He did stuff, and we couldn't capitalize. We didn't make adjustments. We didn't call a timeout when they went on a 21-0 run. Like, you can't let that happen. You have to call a timeout, make something, change something, do something. Um, but we didn't do that. And then when the fourth quarter came around or we were down 16 and the life in state farm arena was like gone um because it was like we shouldn't be doing this like we just folded it unraveled and then two guys came and saved the day the two best players i believe in this entire series for us Number one, Bogdan Bogdanovich, bogey. He's been the best player for the Hawks this series. He's been a killer from three, and he hit three or four big threes late to keep us in striking distance, get us in striking distance. And it got to a point where I wanted him to take every shot because he was the only one who could make anything. Then a defensive mastermind, a guy who finished at the rim, had a big putback late in the game. DeLon Wright. DeLon Wright, earlier in the year, Nate McMillan said, I'm going to shorten the rotation, take him out of it. DeLon Wright's been our second best player this whole playoff series. And he played amazing tonight. Great defensive energy, great defensive effort, finished really well. Hit a big three as well. I think he ended with like 11 points tonight. And you can't ask for anything more from him. I love what I saw from him. Onyeka Okongwu played three bad quarters of basketball then the fourth quarter down late at the game crunch time you need stuff to happen he showed up and that's what you need he's not ready to be a starter yet but he played great down the stretch got a big rebound and one stopped some shots that they took um big defensive presence and i liked what i saw from him and then you could feel the crowd getting back into it as bogey was hitting shots the crowd was going the crowd was going and then Trey hit that game winner, and the place was going crazy. Um, I'm jumping up and down, screaming, yelling. You could just see, feel a sense of, okay, we did it. We got one. We know how to win. We know we have what it takes to hang here, compete, and it felt great to win. I know the guys probably felt great um, because you battled so hard, and you told yourself, hey, we can get a win. We can get another win. We can do this. We can do that. And Nate finally made some good decisions down the stretch. The lineup he ran was great. He, I'll talk about everything else in a second, but I loved what I saw from those guys. Trey played amazing in the fourth quarter, down like, scored 10 points in the last fourth quarter, in the fourth quarter. He went crazy, and he did what a superstar is supposed to do. He finished the game. Jimmy Butler missed two shots late at the game, wasn't able to close the deal, and 
we keep battling one game at a time. That's how you have to take it. Um, Kyle Lowry left the game with a hamstring issue. He said he's going to play um, next game. Hopefully that's still lingering him or he can't play. Um, that would be big for us. But we're going to prepare for him to play. Um, maybe he won't be 100%. Let's hope. Um, and maybe Clint Capella can come back. Um, he got reevaluated today. They said he was out. Um, or he, they said yesterday he wasn't playing today. Maybe something will clear up and he'll be able to go by game four. Or at the latest, game five, he should be back to play Tuesday night. Um, but we need him back. We got out-rebounded by 10. Um, but winning a game saves you another day that Capella could come back. Um, but we got to prepare for a world where he's not. And if we do that, John Collins was a non-factor tonight. He We were worse when he was on the floor. But here is how I would do it. If I'm Nate McMillan, I run Trey Young at the one, Bogdan Bogdanovich at the two. Kevin Herter has been terrible. He shot five for 13 today, one from eight from three, missed a big clutch wide open three, missed a few other wide open shots. He does not need to start. He's not like that. He's not that guy. Don't let him start. This is what I thought Kevin Herter would be last year, or what I always thought he would be. And then he played like he did last year in the playoffs, and it's like, well, maybe he's going to be really good. He's not. DeAndre Hunter, I'd start him at the three. Great defensive guy. Hits some mid-range. Still needs to hit some more open shots, but he brings you more defensively and offensively than Kevin's been bringing you. At the four, you start JC. As bad as he's been playing, he is your second highest paid guy. You have to start him at the four. Then you bring in Onyeka at the five, and that's how you have to do it. Um, I know you've been, we've been wanting to do lineups where JC and Onyeka are like our only centers. No, you start Onyeka and JC. You put out your best lineup that can help you win. Off the bench, first man off the bench is DeLon Wright. He needs to be your first guy to bring in for maybe for bogey earlier, and then he can go in for Bogey earlier or Hunter if he gets in foul trouble. And then so Bogey can come back in with the second unit and still have a lot of energy when Trey can't be on the court. Your second guy off the bench would be Herder. Um, put, see what he can do. Hopefully coming off the bench, less pressure. He'll be able to step up and play better. Then your third guy off the bench, Danilo Gallinari. He's been playing bad on these last two games. Hopefully he can get it going. Um, he needs just some more open looks. He still had like eight or nine tonight, but he just needs to, he, he does better coming off the bench and I think that would benefit him a lot. And that's your team that you rock with. You could also throw Gorgie Dang, Jang, Gorgie Dang out there, Jang out there, God dang. Um, I think he would be helpful in this series because he's so long, not for long, for like short, like two minutes at a time, put him out there. I would like to see that some. Um, he helps space the floor. But that's the eight guys that I would rock with, not including Gor George Gorgie Dang. God. Um, but yeah, I feel like Bogey deserves to start. He should start. If you want to put the best team on the court, you start him. He does good against other teams' benches, but you can also take him out shorter and put him in against their subs later on. Or if he comes off the bench, he needs to come in earlier for Herder. I'm sorry if you want Herder to try to get in a rhythm. He hadn't been. Put Bogey in earlier. Let Bogey play more. Bogey needs to be around the 37-minute range. Trey needs to be around the 40. Um, DeLon needs to be around 35. Like He needs to be playing significant minutes as well. Um... But yeah, John Collins, he's got to step it up or he's not really worth having on the court because he's a big lob threat, but like they're doing a good job of stopping the lobs. He got one lob and he just got rim stuff. But in his defense, he wasn't really bringing much defensively, but hopefully Clint Capella can come back and we can have a full unit out there. Um, our regular team lineup, even if Capella's not 100%, he's on minute restrictions. It's better to have Capella than not have Capella. But a big win tonight. 
hopefully we can pull out another one. We can pull out game four, go back 2-2 two, two, to Miami. This series is, like, it's fresh. Like, you're one point away from being completely out of it. And then now here you are with a chance to tie it up. Trey Young, I swear, this is my last thing, he likes to gamble. That deep three he took when we were down three from the logo, he misses that. We're down 3-0 right now. This isn't a story, but he makes it. We win, and that's all we talk about. He likes to gamble, gambled the whole season, went all in, and it worked. Thanks for watching. Till next time, peace.